Hi, welcome to Matt's Garage. Uh, it's been a while, a couple weeks. I wanted to give you an update on the progress I'm making on the 72 International Scout build, as well as some of the challenges and some of the help I've gotten. I think last I left you, I finished the AX15 transmission, or thought I had, but I have a subscriber, Roger, reached out to me. He's from Gearbox Garage, and he said, uh, you know that $15.41 bolt you just put in your transmission? That's not gonna work, you know, the stock one has a shoulder that uh, locates the fork and he's like that thing will you, you don't want to use that but he wasn't just pointing out a problem he actually sent me one thank you roger and i installed that and then painted it i put the adapter on the transfer case resealed up the transfer case resealed up my steering box so i've gotten a lot done and then i'll kind of walk you through what's going on and the challenges i'm having the good thing is I've got the drivetrain in. Uh, originally I put the motor in and then when I finished rebuilding the transmission, oh my goodness guys, I got two flywheels from Advance Adapters. One of them is actually over there waiting for a return slip. They both were machined improperly. The center hole of the flywheel was not in the center. So I bought a luck one and that slipped right in. So got the luck flywheel in, put the clutch assembly, did the transmission and then I didn't like the angle it was up much higher before so and it it made it so this the the top plate of the was actually tilted forward which you don't want you want it either level or slightly back so uh i had to basically make fab up the scout cross member and i know that's not pretty but whatever it's it's flat from the bottom and so i can put the ax15 um mount you know, I spaced it out so it fits on the transmission and I, anyway, I fabric cobbled that together and it's super sturdy. And then that's the adapter from the AX15 to the transfer case. Transfer case is great. Uh, for the transfer case shift indicator, I got a Tom's Bronco parts makes a um, pigtail for the, uh, for the fuel sender. So I just cut the bottom of the circle out. I can't get a focus here. Sorry, I just cut the bottom of the circle out of this pigtail. And it'll go on there. And it seems to work pretty good. I don't know. We'll see if it stays on. Then I, I did the brake lines. I don't know if you guys have actually seen my fuel tank before. But this is my cut. It's a little dusty. Custom fuel tank with the uh, fuel tank's PA2 pump. Tanks Inc. PA2 pump, uh, and then the sender I had, it's all loomed. I got my my nylon fuel line. I get my brake lines in yesterday. I set up my valves and um, put. I primed the pump. Everything flows well. I got uh, my uh, throttle body injection on there. So it's not all peaches and cream, right? I've been having some challenges. Uh, one of them was on the um, power steering pump I kept ordering uh, seals and they're just, just wrong so anyway I found the right seal kit for that it's an Edelman part number off of Amazon so that's sealed up nice to the front input seal I had to make a hold on let me get it so if you ever if you ever need a spanner wrench I recommend you let me close the garage so the lights better I can't wait to tear this house down. So if you ever need a spanner wrench, I got this adjustable one. And it's got a half inch uh, socket drive thing in there. Anyway, it comes with these pins and these pins are too fat. I mean, they have two different adjustments, but they're still too fat. So what I did was I actually made my own pins out of like uh, 1024 screws. I just kind of made those in there and then I was able to get that front nut off of the power steering box. So once I got the right seals, that went together a piece of cake. Took me a while to find these classic performance parts adapters. These are nuts that um, basically take the uh, O-ring fittings from modern HydroBoost lines and adapt them to the inverted flare in your old power steering box. So that took a long time of searching. Then I had the flywheel fiasco. Then I had the uh, uh, cross member fiasco. That, it took a lot of fabrication to get that cross member built. Couldn't tell from looking at it. And then now I got my shocks in, I got my Bilstein shocks in. I think my front ones are a little too long, but we'll see. And then um, when I went to do my brake lines, 
you know, I found a rubber hose like for a Ford van or something that's good enough for the back, but when I bought the stock brake lines for the front, they come, so I bought, I try to get tricky, right? And not buy the fancy long stainless steel ones. So I actually like rubber OEM hoses. I think they're, they work fine. They're not, they don't look as good, but they're, they're reliable. They're easy to find. Uh, the problem is this has this funky bend in it where it's supposed to like work its way around the knuckles, but I have Mike's high steer on on my Dana 44 knuckles, so that ain't happening. So I, I got, I just ordered a set of extended lines from um, IH Parts America, and uh, they're not cheap, but what are you gonna do? I can't mess around with it forever. Those don't have this bend, it just, it's like a, it's like these at the end. So none of this fancy, and it's just this, so you, that goes on the caliper, you can run it wherever, and then, yeah really annoying but um the reason i'm replacing these extended ones is they're cracked i mean they they really did not stand up well the test of time another reason i wanted to go rubber but the problem with scouts is the stupid banjo end has a 7 16 in the front instead of a 3 8 or whatever the rest three instead of a 5 3 16 3 8 3 8 whatever it's a different size in the front than every other car manufacturer in the world. The back it's the same, and the front it's all messed up, so that's annoying. And what else has been a struggle? Uh, got my hard lines in. That's not a big deal. Oh, my fuel lines, holy smokes, man. I just, you know, it's part of it's just a lack of experience. You know, I, you have different nomenclatures. Like when you say a five, if somebody said it a five sixteenths fuel line, I would think that meant inner diameter, right? But when you order nylon tubing from, like, say, Dorman, if you order a 5 16th line, that's the outer diameter. <laughs> that makes sense. I have no idea. So just, like, adapting it all. Um, I'm also, you know, that tank is a giant bomb, right, basically. But beyond that, it doesn't, it's got a baffle in it, but if I go nose down on a, on a trail or whatever, on a hill, the fuel's gonna slosh to the front and go up the vent and then down the frame rail and then into my charcoal canister. I don't want that. So good luck finding an inline anti-tip over valve. I ordered one from the UK that's got 5 16th barb fittings. Like, why is it so hard to find one? If you guys know of a good anti-tip over valve that's like external to the tank, and doesn't just vent to the atmosphere that you can like carry the venting onto the canister, feel free to share. And then just finding like, I don't want to do like dash, like AN fittings, like it, it's just too much. So I'm like working through brass fittings and trying to figure out the whole fuel line thing. So now I'm going to turn my attention to the body work. I don't want to do the body work. Anyway. I'm gonna get to it. Basically, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna take off the plastic, and then I'm gonna do the fire, like, I'm just gonna start sanding. <laughs> I'm not gonna stop until I'm done. So once I, the, the idea is to do paint, um, what's it called? Wrapper liner, paint, wrapper liner. Paint here on the side, wrap your liner, wrap your liner down here where the, uh, whoop, whoop, this is open the wheel down here. And then once that's done, and this is wrap your line on the inside, then I'll pick the body up, put it on the frame, hopefully for the last time, and then um, do the outside body work. I'm gonna try to do the inside body work first. Sorry, I didn't move it away. Been using this a lot lately. My shop's a mess. Been I've been busy though. I mean, there's I, there's a lot of progress since the last time you guys saw it. So it just doesn't seem like it in TV land years. Because over there they're like, I'm gonna put one tons in my whatever whatever, and then they're like, in the episode they're like, that's it guys, it's something you can do yourself, bro. Just throw some one ton axles under a vehicle that was never designed for it. No problem. Just edit it together. And it's done on YouTube. But I'm keeping it real, which is why I have my hardcore 300. At 300, you guys always watch a show. Everybody else is like, meh. I'll see you 300 next time on Matt's Garage. Hey.
what's his name? Marcus on Fantabulous. He defended Sparta with 300. I mean, I don't see why I need any more than that. Am I right? <laughs>